If you're planning to learn React soon, but you're wondering if you're ready or not, if you know enough JavaScript to learn React or not, then this video is for you. Today, I'm going to give you a list of all of the topics that I suggest all beginners to learn in JavaScript in order to feel more prepared and confident while learning React. So why am I suggesting you to learn these topics before learning React? Well, because when you start learning React and you don't know these topics, then you're going to be learning about these new React features. And you're also going to be learning about these JavaScript features at the same time, thus making this entire learning journey more hard than necessary for yourself. React is a JavaScript framework, which means that it makes use of JavaScript so you can think of it as something like this. When you're cooking a meal, sometimes people make their own spice mix from scratch, which is they mix different spices together in order to make their own spice mix. Whereas other people who are beginner, who may not have as much time to create their own spice mix from scratch, they buy a ready-made spice mix for these different dishes. For example, you can get a paneer masala spice mix, you can get a chana masala spice mix so that you don't have to make these yourselves. So you can think of React and JavaScript as something like that. So JavaScript is like the basic building block and React makes use of this JavaScript, gives you a basic structure, gives you a basic framework so that you don't have to do a lot of the groundwork all from scratch. You can just make use of all of these features that React has provided you with so that your development journey is a little bit more convenient so that it is a little bit more efficient for you. Hopefully that made sense without wasting any more time. Let's jump right into the topics themselves. So beginning with the JavaScript basics, this includes the basic syntax and the basic structure. So how to create comments, how to create variables, what are the different data types available to you in JavaScript, and also what are the different operations that you can perform on these different data types. One major topic that you need to cover here is the difference between primitive data types and objects in JavaScript. Talking about the operators, take a look at the arithmetic operators, comparison operators, logical operators, and assignment operators. If you already know a programming language, then you will probably have some transitive knowledge that you can take forward into this JavaScript learning journey. So learning these operators will be a fairly easy game for you. Then you have control structures, again, if else statements that are probably more or less the same in different programming languages, as well as the switch statement. Then you have loops. The two main loops are for loop and while loop. You can also take a look at the other loops provided to you in JavaScript, which include do while loop and some speciality loops for arrays and objects in JavaScript, the for in loop and the for off loop. Then you have functions, understand what functions are, what is a function declaration, what is a function expression, and how are these two different in terms of hoisting. Then let's talk about another special type of object called arrays. So what is the use of the array data structures? What are the basic operations that you can perform on arrays in JavaScript? Take a look at a few inbuilt methods provided to you as well. Then you have the object data structure, how to create objects, how to access properties, how to manipulate properties, how to iterate through objects and how are objects passed around in functions. And lastly, under this basics topic, take a look at the basic error handling in JavaScript, which includes your try, catch, and finally statements, as well as how to create your own custom error objects. So these are the basic topics, the basic syntax, the basic features that you will be using every time you're working with React. Then let's move on to JavaScript fundamentals. So this includes truthy and falsy values. So in JavaScript, apart from Booleans, so true and false, every value is either a truthy value or a falsy value. So every value either behaves like true or it behaves like false. And this nature is used in JavaScript as well as the different JavaScript frameworks, including React very frequently. Then also take a look at short circuit evaluation. Again, this nature of logical operators is also used a lot in conditional rendering or assigning default values to variables while working with JavaScript as well as while working in React. Then take a look at the difference between the strict equality and the loose equality operator in JavaScript, how to compare two values in JavaScript and what is type coercion. When creating any JavaScript program, you'll work with some data and there would be a point where you'll need to compare two pieces of data. This is where this topic steps in. 
then you have a very important topic it's pass by value and pass by reference i have an entire video on this topic you can check it out using the link in the description box so when creating javascript programs you will be working with functions and when working with functions you'll be passing around values when you pass primitive values versus when you pass objects around in functions these two behave very differently from each other in order to avoid any unnecessary confusion or any unintentional mutations to your data you need to understand the difference between pass by value and pass by reference the next take a look at closures what are closures and how are they helpful react uses closures under the hood in the use state and the use effect hook you might also end up creating your own closures from time to time then callback functions callback functions is again one of those features or one of those concepts that you will be using no matter what type of framework you're working with or even if you're not using any javascript framework even if you're just working with javascript you will be using callback functions every single time while working with asynchronous javascript or while doing dom manipulation and more talking about dom manipulation that is the next thing that you should take a look at before you jump into react now here i want to put a note when you're working with simple javascript programs you're going to be manipulating the dom yourself but when you're working with react as i said react it lays down a lot of the groundwork so that you don't have to do a lot of the things yourself dom manipulation is one of those things so react takes care of the dom manipulation it abstracts out a lot of the logic so that you don't have to implement every single thing but it's important for you to understand what is happening under the hood or what is happening behind the scenes so under this topic you need to first understand what is the dom itself what is meant by elements and what are the different or uh, what are the basic methods that you can use to access elements from the dom from your web page and then manipulate them so these methods include get elements by class name or get element by id or get elements by tag name then do a couple of different exercises to manipulate the dom programmatically using javascript so simple exercises like changing the color of a button with the help of javascript or inserting some new element when a button is clicked and some similar exercises like these once you've done these in javascript and once you start learning react and when you try to do the same exercises in react you'll see what the difference between manipulating the dom in vanilla javascript is versus how it's done in react next learn about the basics of event handling what are events and how to handle these events what are event handlers and how you can trigger some piece of code whenever an event happens also take a look at event propagation which includes event bubbling and event capturing next let's talk about modern javascript so all of the javascript features that were added in or after es6 are referred to as modern javascript features when you're working with react you're writing modern javascript so you need to know these modern javascript features because you will be seeing them over and over again when you're looking at some react code so starting with let and const you need to understand the difference between let and const and you need to understand what is a block and what is the scope of let and const variables because you're going to be using let and const for creating variables in your react programs then let's take a look at one of the most misunderstood topics in javascript which is asynchronous programming understand what is meant by synchronous and asynchronous what is the event loop take a look at the set timeout and the set interval functions in javascript and how do these work under the hood then take a look at promises and the async await syntax promises and async await are important because you will be working with them quite frequently mainly while creating some sort of api request how do you create these api requests with the help of promises or you use the modern async await syntax instead next take a look at sets and maps these are two data structures that were added in modern javascript now sets and maps are just a general feature that you should know for logic problem solving purposes because there would be times where using a set or where using a map would be a more efficient option for you while working with data in your react programs or any javascript program for that matter next take a look at the spread and rest operator again it's used 
quite frequently in a lot of React programs, as well as destructuring objects and arrays. When you're working with React props, you'll see these two features being used over and over again, the spread and the rest operator and the destructuring syntax. Then you have nullish coalescing operator, which also makes use of short circuit evaluation. It is useful for assigning some default values as well as for some sort of conditional rendering. Then you have the optional chaining operator, this makes it very easy for you to work with objects in your JavaScript programs. Then you have arrow functions. So this is a concise syntax for creating functions inside of your programs. You will be using arrow functions a lot, especially when you want to create a callback function. Arrow functions are usually the go-to syntax when working with callback functions. Then you have modules when working with different components. Each component is a file or a module by itself. So you will be importing components, you will be importing functions, utility functions, hooks, and you'll also be exporting your functions. So these are a few mentions from the top of my head when I think of modern JavaScript features that are frequently used. I might have missed out on quite a few. Take a look at these features, do a lot of practice exercises just to get a hang of these new features and the syntax for these features as well. If you have any difficulty or doubts in any of the topics that I've listed so far, then you can check out my JavaScript mastery course. The second batch for this course is going to start very soon. I've left a link to the details of this course in the description box below. I've also left a link to a video where I talk about the course and the topics that we'll be covering in this course. So you can check it out if you're interested. If you want to get a full roadmap for becoming a confident JavaScript developer, then you can check out this video next.